can help play these guys. Got my shot. Got this. If I get the code, I prepare for this day. At one time. Breathe. You never know when your time is going to come. To rise above the rest. To seize the opportunity. To be crowned a champion. Is it time for your story to be told? The World Poker Tour. Welcome everyone to the final table of the main event of the WPT Spring Festival. Looks like we're about to get underway. I'm Daniel DeVoris. Hey, Nick Petrangelo here Nick with Petrangelo. me. What's up, Danny? How you doing? I am doing well, bright and early here, and I'm ready to go. Nice, man. Yeah. So, looks like we got a couple of short stacks. The stuff could start, start moving quick right away. Chips will be flying. We've played a bunch of foul tables like this over the last several months, right? You've been playing a lot of online poker. Yeah, and this uh, stack distribution is uh, familiar and interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so, just looking uh, at... Uh, all right, we got the payouts popped up here. Okay. Okay. We got a little spa music going in the background here. So what do you like how do you approach a final table like this? If this is you, you're one of these guys, whether what your stack is, like do you kind of set up a game plan? Like do you look at stuff before or do you just kind of figure it out when you get there because people are gonna do all different types of stuff? Um, you got any kind of a standard approach you use before you get in there or you just kinda of get in there and start making decisions? So for myself, I generally just get in there and start making decisions because the you know the player pools that you and I play in they tend to be pretty small everyone kind of knows everyone but for something like this my approach I think would be a little bit uh, well it'd be harder to approach because I don't know the players obviously yeah looks like we got something going right off the bat here we've got uh, a little bit of a spicy raise with the jack six off I don't think that one is supposed to get in there sevens is a, yeah this a lot a lot's happening real fast here okay so like the jack six off yeah you want to be aggressive when you have a big stack but definitely not open and really junky offsuit stuff and then the sevens looked like an all right call ace king yeah you always want to squeeze that one and then maybe maybe with the icm stuff the little pairs just aren't good enough to go all in it would be my my quick assessment of that one right off the bat here yeah i agree and with the open you do want to apply pressure as the big stack but he does have uh, a couple of other pretty deep stacks behind him uh, at least danny ace had a had a lot of chips as well yeah so not I like he can get away with, with everything uh, yeah you want to stick with your your, your worst open so you probably want to have an ace in your hand a junky ace or a suited king or something like that and then uh oh looks like we got a little uh so the ace two off is definitely one you can you can consider three betting maybe from the big blind, but it's just going to be a fold in the small blind, I guess. And then, yeah, looks like. This is great. The play is so a... much faster than I'm used to. Uh, everyone's yeah. just kind of. I think that one acting. actually might have been, was that a limped pot? I couldn't see if it went raise or if it was a, a raise on the button and a call. But yeah, some. It. We're, we're off to a rapid start here. So yeah, we are off to a rapid start. We're not quite used to seeing chips fly this hard in the beginning of a final table. Um, a little bit too, I guess the word, the fancy word is uh, linear of a check raise from the small blind here, meaning you know it looks like if he's taking the ace two, 
ace deuce and check raise that wow he got away from it kind of amazing a um, couple things there even though it's super fast no reason to fast play the top pair with the nut flush draw right you want to keep the guy in there if he's bluffing or, or, or making a weird play with exactly like the hand he had ace two and then ace two yeah i mean two loose all over the board you definitely don't want to be check raising one that has uh could potentially just be drawn dead already to another two pair and uh, obviously with with the two, your kicker's pretty pretty weak, so as weak as it gets. So, yeah, I'd probably be tighten up with that one a little bit. Yeah, not a hand that needs much protection either. Just on an ace-high board, not many hands yeah. that can draw out on you. And I agree with the top pair and the spade flush draw. Kind of want to slow play, keep a worse flush draw in there. Uh, maybe let the guy bluff if he is bluffing with something else. And kind of hard right, to exactly. uh, get in, kind of hard to get called by worse when you jam uh, with the ace five of spades there. Your equity is always so, good, but not accomplishing much. Yeah, the other flush, draw, you know, it's going to be a lot of flush draws that when the guy does have a check raise there and then he can't call a jam, obviously, with a flush draw. So this ace six off is a little bit more in line with what we expect from a wide open. It's still too wide, but, you know, that, that being like one of the worst aces to open, but it's fine. Um, I think with some of the short stacks, we would typically see maybe a, sh this one's close with the, the tens. I don't know if you want to call that one or put in a three bet or a shove. I guess all threes are kind of fine. I think I would default towards calling definitely fold or four bet the a six off there, not calling that one in position. Um, and also probably don't need to four bet that one, but I mean, using an offsuit ace is whatever never call it yeah i like the uh i actually like the small three belt with the tens given uh what this guy's actually opening uh, yep. but i agree i would generally default towards calling against a more uh a tighter opening range a more normal open range twos nice fold with the twos the way this final table has been going i wasn't going to be surprised to see just a snap open with the pocket twos there so good for yeah uh, for a friend there and then this king tensu looks normal the the, the a6 off raise on the flop after he does make the call pre-flop that we think is loose i mean it looked like a pretty solid raise a good hand to do it with yeah i think once he gets there uh pretty decent one yeah i like that one the jack is a pretty big i mean like it's not connecting with that even if it is a wild bluffing range the jack is usually a card that's not going to connect with it too much from the big blind there so kind of a bricky board in that situation yeah for sure yeah. and i'm assuming the jacks and the ace three uh like with the two short stacks here there's just not much uh icm pressure Right. Both of these guys are kind of clearly in last, so I I just want to get this in with the ace three. Yeah, and it'd be pretty nice for the the ace three to bust that, make those calls and bust that other short stack as opposed to somebody else doing it. Yeah. So it looks like that one's gonna hold, and yeah, we're it's moving fast here. Let's see. So yeah, I mean nothing, nothing. Sure. Uh, so, uh, player could do differently there. Yeah. So oh, Yushuan, uh, with the ace, with the jacks rather. Uh, looks like he still has some chips left. Yeah, a little bit. But he's gonna. He's of course gonna put it in here. So you want to give us just a tiny little. What are you supposed to do with these tiny stacks? Like, it's super confusing. Like, do you, you have one big blind here? Are you like? Any idea what we're supposed to put it in there with? Because I feel like when I get that spot, it's a it's it's tough to know what the the thresholds are. And you're, when you're sitting at a final table, like, are you trying to make some folds and ladder up, or are you just like putting it in because your odds are good? That spot with this specific stack configuration, I just play very close to chip EV. It's just going to be very hard for you to ladder. Um, maybe in the context of this final table uh, it makes more sense to try and ladder just because it seems to be playing really loose but generally chips you won't flying. get to ladder yeah chips nice. are flying uh, but generally you won't really get to ladder uh, 
and having the big stack in there a lot of side pots uh, so you should get a nice uh, price on the money that you put in beautiful all right i guess we're on Got a little bust out break there we're back so so let's see. We got two real big stacks now, 55 blinds and 47. The 55 blind stack has definitely been our most active player so far. Um, yeah. Yeah, what do you think of this uh, shove? I think it's a hand that clearly needs to be played. Uh, where are you at with regards to shoving versus min raising that one? We want to play a min raise there with the eights and then start folding some of the smaller pairs that really don't play well at that depth and if i want to start just shoving stuff it probably might just be stuff like ace queen off king jack suited type stuff uh stuff that you really benefit from getting a fold but also has that good blocker and all inequity i think the pairs are pretty bad uh in these spots and especially with a few players behind you you're a middle stack i mean you know if you raise the eights they play fine post flop if you could fold to multi-way action behind you and also you got this this chip leader that's been pretty active might give you a little spot where now you've already seen enough to know hey i can raise my eights and shove over this guy's three bet and i'll be fine so i think raising just goes better you know you can play post flop you can get it in pre get a little three bet bluff against you sometimes and then you can you can get out of the way if a bunch of people go all in behind you yeah, I agree. And, and when you shove, it's uh, it's hard to get called by by worse. Oh, that's uh, so... a tight. That's a jack jack eight suited fold there. I don't know if he could see Danny Ace's cards or what, but uh, <laughs> it's that's not one where I don't think we're looking to fold that one. And actually, from yeah, versus the cutoff, I don't know. You, you, you want to have some light jams in that range to take it down because it's hard for him to call you that loose but i don't know I, I think i'd probably just defend the jack eight suited maybe shove something that plays a little worse post flop maybe like a king king at low king x suited would be one of the the loose ones i'd shove and then i'd kind of yeah i might that that fold looks good in the small blind but uh yeah the jack eight suit i'd probably just go post flop there i agree um i i, I think like this is kind of where you kind of have to look around the table uh, if there was like a one big blind stack at the table and then you kind of don't want to get in a messy, messy situation, then it makes sense to start making really tight folds out of the big blind. Right. Uh, but here you're still trying to accumulate chips. Yeah, I think uh, our chip leader definitely could have done something. I, I like the defend with the 8-6 off when you have a bunch of uh, leverage post-flop. But um, then when you get the 4-3-3 with one of your suit. I think you can play leads. I think you can check raise. I think check raising 8-6 with one of the flush cards on a 4-3-3 when you have that ICM pressure. When the imposition player is going to be pretty high card heavy, you probably want to do something post-flop, right? I don't know if you saw yeah, that. Yeah, a, uh, yeah. a lot of good turn cards for you. And I suspect that generally what happens is that the opener just ends up c betting a little bit too often on those boards, right. just yep. because it looks like a dry board. And then you you really put them in a tough situation with uh, when they have a Broadway, which is going to be most of their range. Yeah, some lead, some check raise, whatever. It's funny when you see a crazy aggressive opponent, they, they look like they're ready to, to go nuts and put everyone in spots and they find the the A6 raise post flop and you're like, wow, this, this guy's really doing it. And then that, the eight, six is a little bit of an easier one. So now we know he kind of got some, got some drive to his game, but definitely feeling it out. Yeah. Not, not just uh, straight up aggression. Maybe he's just kind of had a bad feeling about that one. This one just jamming the ACE nine. That's definitely a hand where we want to just put in a raise and fold. I mean, it's way too weak. Yeah, but, from a later a position, hand, it would be 
okay, but not from uh, not with five people behind you. No, and it's a great hand. You 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 need to min you need to raise something that's your steal, and that's the one, right? That one yeah. and like king jack off and stuff like that. Now we're gonna have an altercation here. Soho is probably, I assume, just going to shove 25 blinds from the big blind. You don't want to put yeah, that one in a three bet range, right? Yeah, I think I would prefer oh. to shove that one just because going post flop is. It's. It just doesn't go well for you, I think, with uh, kind of a big ish middling stack versus the chip leader. Yeah. So generally, so I'd be looking to avoid here. those spots. And we thought it was going to go just raise and shove, but they managed to get four bets in pre. Oh, and he gets it on the river. That's uh, that's a swing pot for those two players for sure. That's That was the chip lead pot. Right. Looks like we'd probably want to see the queen 10 put in a little raise there, but I think folding's... It's okay, but that's you probably want to raise the cutoff there off eighteen blinds, even with the stacks behind you. Like you said, you're you're kind of in you're in second to last. Like you got to pick up some chips somewhere. It's that's actually a good play with the king seven. <laughs> He's gonna yeah, run into I'm, it. Uh, but... <laughs> he, he, yeah, it's unfortunate for him because I'm actually on board uh, with this play. You got a nice first, blocker. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're playing against uh, someone that's probably opening like a super super loose range on the button um uh, it does pain me a little it. bit I mean, but <laughs> yeah uh that he runs into it because i think it's uh yeah i uh i like what he's going for there yee ye downy jr i think that was unlucky and i think it was kind of a sharp spot to take the rejam i don't want people to go crazy with the king x rejam but i think i don't know that looked like a perfect depth and first the button and all that i think Kind of, yeah, he ran into it and he's going to get seventh. But uh, nice heart. I like that. And I wouldn't like to defend that one, right? I mean, I'm not, I'd probably start defending like pretty, a little bit tighter than that. So, yeah, not one that plays uh, well post flop. You just uh, end up with uh, kind of, like the best thing that can happen for you really is that you end up with a bluff catcher in the form of a king uh, pairing up which isn't yeah, super exactly. appealing which, and the seven is a tough top pair you gotta you know then you're gonna oh there we get a walk there so the chip leader walks the single big blind the short stack i don't see i don't remember exactly what his hand was but i'm expecting that that's a spot where you just get to min raise a ton yeah um, he, he, he had queen six i i would have uh definitely kind of leveraged the yeah like the stack advantage over the middling stack there and when you have that spot with just a single big blind i think sometimes it's easy to forget like you know you're actually like a later position than the button you only got one guy so you get to widen up and just min raise here standard c bet looks good good hand for it that was the first normal hand we've seen so far yeah it's been uh it's been a wild one I think. Um, what do you think about that the, uh, King Eight? I was gonna uh, say I think the, the King Eight's probably right there into the with the other big stack. With other, you know, you cover everybody, and then the the, the largest stack is the small blind. So I mean, yeah, I think I would open the King Eight. The Ace Five suited on the button. Do you want to? The big blind had only. I think like 12 blinds, right? So that's a tricky spot when you have 20 and 12 in the big blind. You, you know, that might have been a spot where if he had like 17, you just shove. Yeah, that seems uh, that seems like a close one and a tough spot for sure. Matt, I, I, don't, think... I don't think that raise folding is, is all that bad. It's, if you calling that off, I think is the tough, it's a tough spot for you i think it, that wasn't a too bad of an option i don't know what the, that's a loose open from a short stack that's more of a, a gigantic stack open hand yeah um and with the ace five i think i would um, 
like I just lean towards uh, kind of playing in a way in a way that leads to as many decisions as possible in a field like this. Uh, so yeah. in a tougher field, I might jam. Uh, also because I can kind of trust my opponents, like especially the small blind, to make the appropriate tight folds. Here, I'm not sure. Uh, Just men raise yeah, and that be willing to on. do that. Yeah, yeah. and and post flop generally will tend to go a little bit better in fields like this. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, you you might get away with some bluffs. You might not. You might get away. You know, you might get tricky with some value and make more money than you're supposed to when you're when you have a big post flop edge. So, yeah, I think what you said is true. You want to keep, you know, give yourself the opportunity to to play post flop a little bit and don't just rip it in and keep everything simple for everybody. Um, we did see our uh, former chip leader in the. Uh, I guess now in the big blind just made a, a gigantic open after that wasn't standard ace queen off went for the 4x open so that was the first time we saw that keep an eye out for those when you're trying to figure out new final tables you always keep an eye out for little sizings right because sometimes it might mean nothing and then sometimes you might just catch something that's super consistent like oh this guy only four x's with ace queen and ace king off yeah um definitely some well i mean easy for us uh, obviously with cards up uh, but oh, you yeah, really want to be sure. paying attention to showdowns uh, when when you're playing. So we found the lead with the 6-5 off here. I think, you know, not a hand you want to lead, but the right idea when you do cover someone by twice as much that you're going to start being able to lead flops. But, uh, yeah, this is just kind of a... This is a... Yeah, I'm curious yeah, how this ends up. It's tough to build a strategy where you fire bets into the, the deep, dark woods here. Yeah, you're just going to... That was... Yeah, that, I mean, that was nines... spicy. Yeah. <laughs> like, the theoretical uh, part of me just goes, oh, man, nines. Uh, it, you know, like, the nines just blocking all of the uh, more intuitive bluffs, like stuff like jack nine, queen nine. Yeah, uh, that would have worked you for know, me. Yeah, for, oh, for sure I'm uh, pitching the nines there. Uh, but, you know, if you're seeing bluffs from just complete air balls, then a uh, totally different ball game, obviously. Yeah, it's funny that the player uh, the, the player found the leads with the 6-5 there, but then something more more natural or easier to find uh, with the 8-6, just a snap bowl. Uh, nice, nice raise here. I would like to see it a little bit bigger, but... Um... Yeah, that's exactly the type of hand when you have a nice ICM pressure on somebody that you take and make the tiny raise, put the pressure on them. Yeah, too oh, weak to shove, uh, but a good one to bluff. Um, and again here, like you were saying about the sizings, uh, we haven't seen much, but this is almost a 3x with jacks. Uh, yeah. You know, a little bit bigger than you'd normally see. And we saw min raise the the ace five suited on the button, right? So then there there are these like little. Who knows if they're if you can pick anything up or not? But it's always worth trying. And there's a bad beat. You need those sometimes at the final table. And uh, yeah, we're gonna and be. We'll down have to... uh, Lynn Gilmartin joining us in a few minutes. If there's anyone left playing, yeah, there's. We got. Are we down to five now? Okay. Yee Downey Jr. is definitely definitely has my favorite name so far. <laughs> I. I know it has to have something to do with Robert Downey Jr., but I don't know what exactly. But the, got the Yee and the Y K Y. The and here. then in sixth, uh, we have Yu Yu Kian. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the whole name. Uh, Locking up uh, looks to be around 50k USD. So now we've got the two chip leaders right next to each other. Now we're going to expect to see the King Jack open, the tens three bet. Uh, I guess 30 from the big blind. It's a lot to shove. You could you yeah, could probably like make arguments. You probably want to play three bets or or. 
if the stacks were really skewed into these two players having most of the chips, you would see a bunch of calls, right? Um, this guy, uh, that's a nice flop when you three bet the tens. That's a very loose float with no backdoor hearts. And also pre-flop, you just want to be folding that one. Um, this kind of shows you the problem with making a loose float like that. Like you turn the shin card unless you're trying to turn top pair and then you have to fold. So that kind of shows why you can't do that. Yeah, you want to have a little bit more behind, I think, so that um, just so that you realize more of your equity so that this doesn't happen where you play a two streak game and uh, ha have to fold a good hand. And uh, yeah, I definitely like the non all in. Uh, three bet with tens with the stacks as they were um, I'd be looking to like bluff that spot a lot put a lot of pressure on the kind of middling stack as um, as the guy with more chips uh, so definitely want to have a substantial value range as well right yeah so just expand down to the to the tens or so and then you get to bluff a lot a lot more of that big blind junk High card, low card, whatever. Good fold with the Jack-10. Soho is on an absolute heat show right now. He's getting all yep. the pocket pairs. And this should get defended for sure. Um, and a little bit yeah. lower than that. I mean, you can you can jam, right? And you can go, you can jam the, the lower suited Kings there versus the chip leader and expect to get it through. It wouldn't have worked this time. Yeah, I think um, like if so in that spot, I think if if I think someone's really abusing, uh, kind of not the bubble, but I guess the uh, the pay jumps as the chip leader, um, I think just shoving anything reasonable out of the big blind, um, like if they're just opening way too loose, is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I think you gotta still, even though you're covered and stuff like that, the seven three suited, you still try to throw a limp in there. You're gonna limp a lot of your range when you're that sixteen blind stack, so you're allowed. Hi, Lynn. You're allowed. Hi, to guys. Lynn. How's it going? I'm just creeping in on in on you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're we're losing players uh, every couple minutes here. It's been uh, it's been pretty crazy so far. Yeah, can it, there's see. only five handy. Yeah, yeah, we already lost three. So some aggressive no. plays like this one are leading to the chips flying around. So, yeah, Dan, I mean, you know, you definitely want to raise stuff early from all right. We might potentially, in, uh, but um, yeah, yeah we might is, potentially uh, lose one more. Um, it looks like we're and that's it. John <laughs> yeah, so Dan, so Dan, of course, there, you know, you don't want to raise call the uh, the 10 high, you want to have some. Some not all in raises from early position for sure, but you want to use high cards, right? That's the big the big thing here is you know you want to have like aces or kings in your range when you make that under the gun raise. Probably not ten high. If you do make it, you probably don't want to stick it in with ten high. But, yeah, uh, and uh, with, with short stacks like this, you're just looking. Uh, I'd be looking for a blocker uh, for making any sort of open, uh, like the suitedness and the connectedness of 10-8 doesn't really uh, do much uh, with sub-15 big blinds. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it's, you know, that player clearly felt like it was time to gamble and run up a stack or get out of there, right? He's last place. Uh, just kind of wanted to get it moving. Let's see. So we're four-handed now. Um... 14 blinds with the fives, I think shoving into a single big blind, totally fine. And then maybe you even just start raising sixes. It's like right there, right? Yeah. Uh, and got to go with the a seven. Oh, geez. And now we're we going to be three handed. Uh, they're really <laughs> dropping like flies here. <laughs> this is hilarious. All right. Catch you later, guys. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Now we're playing. Are you a three handed specialist? Do you come in for the just the three handed part? <laughs> I am the worst person to have brought in with you guys <laughs> at this point yeah. in the tournament. Have you been playing any? You've been playing any poker yourself during when you're when you're home and stuff like that, or a little. I have. I've been playing a little bit, and I played in this event, although I lasted about an hour. Um, really, I cashed this event, by the way. I know. Last bounty standing. Congrats! I saw that. Yeah. Yep. 
Wow, I was the last bounty standing. I feel like probably yeah, that's just because were. other people didn't try hard enough. I was trying. Hard. I actually, I actually tried, like. Yeah. I actually tried super hard, and uh, it just it didn't work out. I, I tried super hard three times. I think I tried <laughs> too hard one time deep, and I made a bet. Now that I'm watching these guys play, I think I made some bad folds. I was trying too hard. Sometimes I needed a little more gamble in me, I think, to get deep in this one. But here, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think this one's kind of sta like the ten six six Dan. It's a spot where, especially versus the two fifty blind stacks, you expect that flop to go check check a ton, right? Like the in position player doesn't really gain too much from putting a lot of volume in C bets there. When you know the ten six six is one of those boards where you kind of want to play passive in position. I think. Yeah, I think it's uh, with these stacks, it's a bit of ICM chicken everywhere. So uh, just kind of expecting a lot more passive play than you would normally. Uh, but from from what I've seen from this final table so far, uh, that's just not going to be happening. Uh, and I, right. like everyone's just being super aggressive and chips have been flying. I mean, no back doors here. King high, I think you you just let that one go. On rainbow, you can choose uh, a bunch of different suited stuff that has back doors to continue with, right? You'd have a bunch of different straight draws and gutters and stuff like that. Uh, here, you want to be three betting this one a bunch. That looks very small and gets through. So, Dan, how do you uh, like when everyone has the same stack here? It's harder to decide, like, am I under ICM pressure or not? Because we're kind of now we all have like 50. The we're, we're, if we're not making a deal, like all the values of our stacks are the same, and is it kind of like you just decide who's going to take control, or are you still respecting ICM? Like, how do you decide how much pressure you're under when the stacks are all kind of similar like this? Like, what kind of adjustments do you make? It's a little bit tricky because I think there's a, kind of like a snowball effect uh, where if the stacks are even, um, clearly oh, everyone's equity. Yeah, clearly everyone's. Uh, equity in the tournament's the same, but if you get a little bit ahead, then suddenly you can put more and more pressure on the other two shorter stacks. Uh, so, right. yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, I'd be looking for spots to kind of build a little bit of a chip lead so that I can leverage it further. Right, so you'd probably be pressing the aggression. I mean, this, like, this imposition flop raise... I feel like you need to kind of play a bunch of calls here. And on such a wet board, even with ace jack, I think I'd probably mix a lot more checks than I would normally at that stack depth in position, just because, you know, you get check raise a decent amount on a board like that and your hand isn't amazing versus uh, aggression. But here, I mean, a lot of money was going to go in. I just don't know if I would have got it in the same way. I think I would wow. play calls in position. We are, uh, we are very close to going heads up super quickly so now exactly what we were just talking about is a crazy scenario that's happening right now there's the ultra shorty second place is in a horrible spot now uh in terms of the chip leader getting to run them over right yeah uh lynn have you been uh like watching any of these games uh how uh like how familiar are you uh with uh with the play i guess well, that's actually what I was going to ask you guys. You spent a lot longer in this tournament than I did. <laughs> Wait, is this how the entire event has been? Like, what it, has it been this fast paced? I, yeah, I think, I think generally we, <laughs> we have some experience playing against uh, some of these types of opponents, and yeah, they're very aggressive. All the nerdy ICM stuff we like to talk about, kind of, they don't really like to play by those rules as much. It seems like and. Like I said already, I think I probably played too tight in this tournament, for sure. <laughs> it is amazing to see, you know, different regions of the world just just embrace the game in different ways. It's it's nice to see. Yep. This, uh, yeah, for but sure. yeah, I got that. There's a that was a tricky little uh, lead and defend from the short stack. I think we we want to be folding those types of hands when we're that short. But uh, yeah, like we were talking about, Dan, that's exactly what we're saying. Now this 60 blind stack is has to play, I mean, if you're trying to do the right thing, play really, really tight, right? Until this 11 blind stack gets out of here. 
Yeah, he is kind of between a rock and a hard place. Um, I do have to say, though, like this, uh, the payout structure for this tournament is extremely top heavy. Uh, y- right. You have 270k USD up top. Uh, second is 150, third is 112. So, like, laddering from third to second, uh, clearly it's worth something. Uh, but when first is almost double what second is, uh, it it is kind of going to, should be playing a little bit closer to Chip EV than uh, maybe one is used to when it's three-handed. Right. And as the chip leader here, you probably just want to be just shoving that ace queen right he just limped into the 11 blind stack but uh you want to be shoving so much that you need to shove hands like ace queen and it happens to work out that ace queen isn't amazing in a limp check spot post flop so i think he he limped that one and probably want to see that one shove and then this one's probably also a shove yeah every where in the world are you guys uh, I've been kind of hanging out in Europe and Canada since all this started, so right. all over the place. Uh, so, but yeah, and Dan, I think Dan's a Canadian boy. Yeah, I'm in. Yes. I, I've been in Toronto for the most part, uh, spending some time in Alberta, uh, which has been nice. At my house. At your house. Yeah. <laughs> which is also nice. <laughs> Yeah, I got you guys a neighbors. Well, I'm... I was going to say, I have Go a ahead. vacation house that Dan spent more time at than me, I think, in, uh, oh, how in nice. Canada. Yeah. In near near Banff. Looks like we got some action well, here. How... I mean, the nut flush draw is not going to fold. He's probably just going to stick this in, and then this guy is going to call it off. Well, okay, I'm wrong. I don't know, Dan. I mean, with eight lines behind and a nut flush draw and straight draw, you'd think you probably want to get the money in on the flop there, I guess. Yeah, I think it's just a hand that always has good equity when called. And uh, when you do make your hand um, after taking a passive line, it's kind of uh, like it's hard for good things to happen. You know, if he like makes a straight nine, six probably isn't going to put more money in. Right. So now they got the big sweat and he missed it. Yeah. So now our short stack doubled up a little bit. So yeah, what have uh, uh, you been up to, Len? Uh, I'm in Australia, so I'm on the other side of the planet to you guys. Um, and it's late at night here. It's like 11 p.m. I've just been hanging out. I've just been here in our little bubble of this island, which has been quite beneficial for the last 12 months, being in a very foreign island. Right. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, th- it's very strict there, right, in terms of... Uh regulations with so i mean i guess your in terms of being healthy and safe yeah. it's a good spot yeah absolutely life feels pretty normal we can move around pretty freely but the the international borders are closed so no one can come in uh as easy as usual and we've got the hotel quarantine and all of that which has 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 helped so right. i'm very grateful yeah how are you spending all your uh extra free time now not well, I'm pregnant. You don't have to travel, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's a full time job, right? That's, that's enough. Yeah. So I've actually been spending a lot of it on the couch because that's what pregnancy <laughs> does to you. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. It's exciting. It's, it's probably sweet to be lazy and hang out for a while after you travel around the world working all the time for so many years. Yeah, it has been a nice change. It's been it's been fun not having um having something to pack for, you know, to, to move on to the next thing. I can just, I can just chill for a minute, <laughs> but I, I think I'm being feels, told yeah. I'm switching over to the Indian stream now before this thing finishes. I'm going to pop in and say hi to those guys. Yeah. You, <laughs> right. you don't oh, have, that's you, it. you might want to hurry because, it, you know, I know. <laughs> there'll be a champion by the time I jump over. So good to see you. In- <laughs> yeah. See ya. Yeah, see nice you channel. guys. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like it looks like Danny Ace a couple times so far with this big chip lead. He's actually done the thing where it's like he didn't want to double up the short stack, took a couple passive lines. Um, 
I feel like, you know, that, that can happen sometimes where you're like, I got this guy whittled down to 10 blinds. Like, I don't want to do anything crazy and get him back in the tournament type of thing. Uh, but you really need to keep the pedal to the metal, right? And make sure that you're, like you said, you're using this. When you build a little lead, lead there, you get to be super aggressive. Um, and when you're chip leader, I think you still get to defend hands like this first the min raise at 25, although they're, they get a lot worse than they do for chips, right? Yeah, but I, I think um, I think you should realize a little bit more equity. Um, mm. And I actually, I actually think this is a great say, play. Um, I was going to say, this is exactly the type of hand class you like to check raise here. Good for him. Yeah, you, you have some back doors. Uh, you have a blocker, obviously. Uh, you might get a fold from some pocket pairs that beat you uh, either now or later in the hand. Uh, so I really like the play. Um, obviously, it didn't work that time. Uh, but right idea, for sure. Yeah, it's a good... I mean, I think, you know, when you you, ha you just... You can take those with the an undercard that has maybe a straight draw. You need a little protection, a little backup. Uh, get that one through a bunch. So Soho really made a comeback here. Now he's almost even with that middle stack. Who actually has the middle stack has been no no decisions have come up yet, but he's definitely seems like he's on the plan to, to be tight. Yeah, at least in the uh, like in the context of how everyone else has been playing, um, I don't think we've uh, we've seen him do anything too crazy. No. Nope. So this is going to be a three bet opportunity in a small blind. Definitely versus the middle stack with ace five off. I would, I would definitely consider three betting that one sometimes. Yeah, that that's a spot where um, you know you have a blocker. You clearly can put a lot of pressure on the middle stack. Um, but you know, at, at the same time, every time, yeah, you don't have to do it. I like the limp here with the plan of having the chip leader you know, raises a lot, and then you just stick it in. You could you could make some arguments for limp calling very strong and then limp calling a lot of your range, but I think... So I think, I think what happened was fine. he min-raised and got three bet. It just happened so very quickly. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you min-raise and get three bet... I think you have no option but to just shove like we talked about. I mean, ace, queen off. First of all, against the chip leader, he, he can three bet a bunch of different types of stuff. So it's not like he only three bets ace, x, and then you have him dominated and the call works out well. When he has so much stuff, you got two blockers. You know you're up against a high frequency three bet. I think you just put it in, take it down pre. That changes your stack a bunch. Uh, now, when you lose this pot post flop, you just you really gave this guy. Uh, kind of the opportunity to run the tournament over with now you're you're kind of two middle stacks versus the chip leader yeah i'm i'm on board with all of that danny ace folding the king four off on the button i'm not saying it i think it's good but you know some people take the chip lead and decide that they're going to open the button 70 percent or something so i think that that's definitely a data point that he's not going complete chip lead rampage mode Yeah, and I think uh, given the way uh, these guys have been playing, I don't think you can get away with all that much. Right. Right. That's a yeah, good like, open. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've hand. seen, um, like, I don't think we've seen any tight folds, really. Let's see. So here I would expect, that's a good fold. I would have expected him to call. I, don't, I, I think that was a good fold tough hand class to play you want to just be more aggressive with a lot of three betting and uh just use high cards like we said right yeah and uh pr pretty standard all around I, I think for this hand yeah i mean never a huge concern at the at that depth but when you're talking about final table ranges normal final table ranges uh those low boards are a lot better for the three better than 
than they are usually, right? Because the in-position player just doesn't doesn't open and call these small pocket pairs or pseudo connectors and stuff like they usually do. They're way tighter, and so the, the low cards are just way more bricky. King 7 is a little bit too loose. Yeah, and also just the stack-to-pot ratio is low enough that, uh, you know, if they have a set, obviously it sucks, especially if you bust a tournament to a set, but it is kind of uh, stacks are short enough where you can just kind of, like, shrug it off, and if he has a set, he's he has a set, you know? Yeah. I'd probably be folding the Jack Nine pre there with thirty three blinds, but you know, whatever. Good flop. Nice nat nice easy one to check back there. Yeah, that one's uh an intuitive one. Hard to get like three streets of value or even two streets of value. Um, you can call any turn after checking back, uh, and you, you keep in some hands you dominate as well, uh, and you don't really get um, better to fold, uh, like better flush draws to fold. Uh, so right. I like how uh, I really like how he played it there. Yeah, and so this one should just go fold, fold. It does feel like things have calmed down a bit once we got three-handed. Yep. I think it's... Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think maybe it dictated a little... Like, the, our chip leader isn't doing, hasn't done anything wild yet. That's a big deal. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the king three open, that's, that's why the 30-blind shove with the sixes is close um I'd well probably given just the king three the... open it it's probably pretty great right right yeah if he's open too wide um i would definitely consider three betting the big blind with a hand like this as a bluff i think you know it's, it makes for a good one and it doesn't play as well post post flop but now he's got the top pair <laughs> so i think it's fine Just yeah, clearly not going anywhere yet. Just barreling at the speed of light here. And out of position. There we go. But yeah, I mean, the Ace of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, it seemed like a fine hand to put in a couple bets with. And blind versus For sure, blind you have a, a draw to the nuts. You have uh, blockers to good draws. Uh, and then the 10, I feel like you kind of have to give up. It's just, uh, It's just such an awful card for you. Like, you're probably not going to be betting with a 10 twice. A 10's going to call twice. Uh, so it's just uh, kind of a hard card to bluff on. And you can win, right? Sometimes. And you could win, win, yeah. You can definitely go check, check, and you could win against uh, a flush draw or another straight draw. The 4 3 off is above the law. Type of raise. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, you don't want to be putting money in with two low cards, but hey, it's all right. This is a good candidate for a little uh, little raise if you wanted one, the king eight, and then, yeah, all right. This looks kind of kind of normal the way it played anyway. See, you say bet? that. Like, uh, the, the free flop was normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, post-flop, I think when you have 20, that was a large C-bet. I think that the Broadway board is really good for the imposition player, and he's allowed to just C-bet a bunch, so C-betting seven high is fine. Shoving the king eight, you'd have to think that the imposition player is, like, super linear with his with his pot size, with his uh, half-pot C-bet, and would, like, be bet-calling some other not flush draws or or you know, second pair type stuff, which I think is a little bit of ambitious plan. Good three bet here with the king queen. I expect this button player to probably, I mean, definitely consider shoving from the way this player has played and always will call at least. Yeah, certainly not folding. Uh, and I think 
which way you go with regards to shoving or or calling just kind of like that's kind of like a feel it out sort of spot uh, try to figure out how aggressive they've been playing and then do you ever stick in a little raise on the flop with some hands like this or you have to be deeper for that or do you just always call it I don't think I want to raise this hand just because our equity is so bad against uh, hands that continue. And um, yeah, I'm just like really not looking to, I'm trying to avoid big confrontations, right? Um, which is going to yep. be hard to do uh, in a three bat pot uh, when you're like 50, 60 big blinds deep. Uh, but the least you could do is at least not put a raise in with like an under pair. So it looks like he played it perfectly there. He got, got called twice when the money was, uh, when he was ahead and then got rivered and made the fold. So well played hand. I think Danny Ace, I mean, you know, I would prefer to start barreling a hand like that with a heart on the turn, but it doesn't, it seemed like a fine hand to bet. And he, on bricks versus a lot of different types of hands, he if he went all if he was three barrel and all in, he was probably going to get it through a good bit because uh, yeah. So yeah, I like Danny Ace's line uh, for sure. Um, like the, the, the flop value he just gets to see, but yeah, I mean, like the flop he gets to see, but uh, turn he gets some ace highs to fold. Uh, still has equity when called, um, and then river. Uh, yeah, River, you just jam for value, right? What can you? What else can you do? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can check call against stuff like nine ten, but not too much. Uh, looked like we missed a, a pretty tricky little squeeze with the king eight there, and then Soho had called Ace Jack off and back jam the small blind, which I liked both plays. I thought that was fine. I mean, at that depth, looks like Soho found some pre-flop jazz and i like that shove that's really good yeah uh yeah, yeah especially against the player game. who's been opening so wide right i think you can shove the five four there i think that uh the ace king off i mean i'd probably shove it but i you know finding those small raises shallow in position is pretty good something a lot of people don't do <laughs> Yeah, and again, I think just uh, trying to trying to take lines that force as many decisions as possible, uh, especially if two decisions are close, is generally gonna is generally gonna be good, uh, especially if you have an edge on your opponents. Um, and you know, if you don't have an edge on your opponents, it's a it's a way to play more. Uh, it's a way to make more decisions than get better. Yep, for sure. Let's see. Um, I think, you know, when you have you have 80 blinds, second place has 40, the other guy's got 18, I'm mostly raising in the small blind. I'm obviously limping sometimes, and this hand makes a lot of sense to limp, but I'm going to be raising a lot there, right? As Danny Ace here. Yeah, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the middle stack. And I like his flop check. Uh, big blind should have a three a little bit more often than the small blind. Uh, and again, it's not a hand that is going to be able to get like three streets of value and it doesn't need much protection. So I, I really like the flop check. Right. Yeah. And when you're talking about a check back range in the big blind, when you've got a King, the board's King three, three, you start putting in money, especially against uh, a lot of times, even loose players, they don't, they don't call flops enough with like junky backdoor type hands. So I feel like when you start putting in money out of position there, you're you're kind of asking for your opponent to fold or have a three a lot when they don't continue as much. So I like the check. You kind of, yeah, even as chip leader, once you go post flop, you still have to be, be a little bit more cautious post flop uh, in some spots than, than you are for chips. Yeah, especially, especially when, when so deep. And it is a spot where, um, like, if they got into a big confrontation, uh, Soho and Danny Ace, the stacks would basically flip, uh, which would be kind of a disaster for Danny Ace, obviously, uh, because not only yeah. do you, like, not only do you lose chips, but also you lose all that leverage that you have in the tournament. 
Yeah, so what you're saying is kind of this is a spot where Danny Ace, like, yeah, he wants to be chip leader. He wants to put the pressure on. But it's also a spot where he really would like to preserve what's going on, like a short stack, a middle stack, kind of chip away, not yeah. play huge pots, and then lose his lose his spot because he's in so such a good spot now. 8-7 off versus Shorty. I think you just got to let that one go. I think given the opens that I've seen, I, I think don't fine. mind it. Yeah, because um, we've seen like the king, like the king five off opens, some other loose opens. Um, so I, I don't mind it. Um, wow. Yeah, tricky check back with bet. the top set. Well, this just went bet, raise, raise. Yeah, so he checked back top set, 8-7, led the turn, got raised, and did not believe. Well, he got raised, then he re-raised, and then, what, what, but he made it, I guess, almost all in, right? Yeah. wonder if he was, that could have been kind of a, so now, yeah. So now, how do you, how do you adjust now as the chip leader? Are you thinking, like, now these guys they're going to play closer to normal because now no one really has a lot of pressure. I mean, it seems like they're playing pretty wild anyway, but in a normal scenario, would you now as a chip leader think you have less pressure to exert on these guys? I'm actually, I'd be kind of loving life right now as the chip leader because in the, like in the previous scenario, uh, the last stack was clearly in last. So you can obviously do stuff and you know apply pressure as the chip leader uh, but the short stack is just going to try to win chips against you uh, so you, th like there's a limit to what you can get away with when the short stack can just play kind of chip ev now in this scenario uh, the stacks are kind of distributed in a way where the two short stacks kind of are in a war to outlast each other almost um, again very top heavy payout structure, so less of a consideration here. Uh, but uh, I actually think that Danny Ace has uh, potentially a little bit more um, more ability to put pressure on uh, with stacks like okay. this. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Wow. So exactly what we were talking about in that King 3-3, three, three, we see Soho, he folds the Queen Jack of Clubs here which has every backdoor in the world, two overs. So, I mean, that you know, you got to gotta be continuing that one. And if you're not, then that when you have air as Danny Ace, that C-bet's going great. And when you have a top pair, you're not getting money in as much as you should be, it looks like. Yeah. Um, that could also be a thing. You know, you lose a big pot at the final table. You get a little bit flustered. You're not, you, you kind of kind of maybe make some quick decisions that you wouldn't normally do with Danny Ace again like we kind of want to see him playing his small blind more aggressively he just folded jack six suited on the button I think uh 10 six um, I think yeah oh, uh so but 10, I'd, six. yeah uh like I wouldn't be looking to fold many suited hands on the button there uh yeah it's just the spot where especially the big blind should be three betting you less uh, should be more passive, uh, should be tighter. Right. So Danny Ace is, is is on the more, a little bit of a tighter chip lead strategy as we head into break. But uh, you know what, like that's, that's probably pretty reasonable way to win the tournament given what we've seen from the opponents. Yeah. Uh, so we are on a three minute break. And we'll be back soon. I think a really important component of being an intelligent person is interest in learning things. And that's something you've always had. Yeah, staying interested and in, in wanting to educate yourself and, and, and learn new things has really, uh, really been a big part of my life. But the problem is that once I get into something, I really get into it. You know, like if I start like a video game, I have to set a timer. Because I'll play the video game all day. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? Right now, my life is like, I just want to be balanced and try to live a balanced life. But that takes some discipline. You know, like, I go golf, like, you know, I'll, I'll if I start golfing, I'll purposely take days off. 
you know, because I don't want to well, go. Of course, when you started golfing the last time, you got up at 6.30 every morning for an entire year. Well, that's because the first year in a golf course, I lost a million and a half. As you know, I made fun of you the way you played other games besides stud. You know, we were, that stud was your game. You were a good player, especially you've always. always been... I always was better at stud than you. I just wanted to clear that up, uh, yeah. just so you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move on from you there. You were always as good at stud than me. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> you used to have your wife drop you off at the club. You know why you used to have her drop you off at the club? So you could have me drive you home and you could ask me questions. No, about that's not true. That's that a is fucking exactly lie. What happened. That is not fucking true. That's what true. used to happen. That is not you don't true, remember dude. That? I can't believe you're even saying something like that. You don't remember that? Just because I, re I respect your opinion doesn't mean I think that you're better than okay, me. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. For me, it was I was uh, very intense. I wanted to win so bad. Like, I paid attention to every single detail of everything that was going on in the game. And... Yeah, you've been um, a focused you've been really you know, focused and, and person. Being, and, being, and being focused and, like, you know, trying mm -hmm. really hard, you know? Like, I didn't realize, until I went through a phase where I wasn't trying very hard, I didn't realize how hard I tried. Yeah, you worked hard, for sure. And it, you know, like, no, tried at yeah. the table, you know what I mean? Like, by paying attention and being present and, like, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to win that drive, you don't see many people with that, you know, like when I look. Well, when of I, course, of course. You know what I mean? And well, um, people even used to call it like the Phil Ivey stare or something, yeah, and, like yeah, how intense you were. A lot of things like I took for granted, like being able to like understand people's energies and like body language stuff. And like, you know, I just, I just knew intuitively. And we're back. Yeah, so I guess what what we would expect to see in a normal scenario is uh, Danny Ace kind of pushing the limits with opening and stuff like that. And then, you know, the shorter stacks, like you said, they're in a battle to outlast each other, which means kind of being super... Um, like, you're doing a lot. You're not going post-flop too much as on the shorter stacks. You're trying to take stuff... Uh, down without showdown. You're trying to kind of preserve the spot you're in, right? And and hopefully the other guy will bust. Yeah, you're a uh, short stack. Yeah, you're you're just looking to yeah, you're just looking to outlast the other guy. Uh, but again, uh, with the payouts as they are, uh, the jump from third to second. Uh, you're looking at like 40k USD, and the jump from second to first is uh, like 120k USD, if my math is correct. Uh, so, you know, there is something to be said about accumulating trips. Hey, Matt. Good morning. Hey, what's Matt, going what's on? Up? How are you? Moving fast over here, man. We're, uh... <laughs> I hear that. I got called in an yeah. hour early, so that's good. But uh, yeah. how's how's the play been? Wild. It's been some, yeah, some aggressive <laughs> stuff, some randomly tight stuff. Kind of, kind of checking all the boxes here. Well, um, but actually, now three, three handed has been your recent much. Win. Uh, Danny, that's good. Yeah, three handed has been much more normal. Than uh, the the quick eight handed that we saw. Okay. A little bit. They're calming down a little bit here. Awesome. Congratulations your on your game? recent win, Daniel. I'm sorry about that. Oh, and obviously, thank you, too, Nick. You guys have been doing well. It's been great to see you guys doing well. My golf game's okay. We got a tee time this morning. Moved it up a little earlier because of this, but uh, yeah, everything's good. Moving up early, yeah. When you, uh, yeah. yeah, we got to play again. I guess we're not gonna we're not gonna play against each other for a long time in golf, probably, until I yeah. get back in this in the states in the same place. But uh, yeah, 
I'm getting better. I'm getting better okay. last time we played. Oh, are you? Okay. Well, you were, you know, you have, you have a lot of ability. Let's just say that. Got to, yeah, I got to remember, got to remember how to play like I did when I was a kid. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough to unlearn all these bad habits. Were you, uh, like, were you really good at golf as a kid? Yeah, I was, like, a scratch golfer, then I, but then now I'm, uh, I work my way down to a five now, Matt, but last time we played, oh, I was yeah. probably, like, a 10 or a 12. Awesome. Yeah, I can't get any better. I stay solidly at a 12. But, uh, <laughs> well, you I'm win all the money in every match. <laughs> no, I don't. No, actually, I'm, I'm losing lately, but that's all right. Everybody else is getting better, and I'm just staying the same. That's so sad. That's what's happening in poker too. Everyone's getting better. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Dan. I think that that one we see that those deuce deuce three board or whatever. You're gonna play pretty passive as the out of position player in the limp check line. So not surprising to see him put on a little money and fold. And now we've got uh, he's significantly shorter than second place. Kind of back to where we were when we started three handed. Yeah, um, and they like the just the straight up jam uh, with the ace jack. Good hand, good blockers, good equity when called. Uh, not that great post flop. Same thing here. Shoving the ace two is fine. You can go for the limp jam with that one too. Um, if you have a big blind that you think is gonna hit you with a bunch of those isos that they should be. Um, Nine four against the chip leader is not the one you want. You want to be playing almost always limping there, right, Dan? Small blind when you're under that much pressure, but looks like he's going to get a good flop here for his hand. Yeah, I think in that spot, you're kind of looking to... Like, with your good hands, you're looking for the chip leader to raise, uh, which should happen very often because just because of the dynamic where he can put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, so uh, you, you kind of want to trap all of your good hands and then the hands that aren't so good, uh, well, you don't want to be putting a lot of money uh, with them anyway. Right. So that situation kind of lends itself to wanting to play a strategy where you limp a lot. Here covering so much with the gut shot and... Uh... The monotone board, I'd probably throw the seabed out a lot with the king nine. I mean, trying to generate a bunch of folds right away. Um, but checking's fine, and then yeah, you got to give up on the turn there. Let's see. So, Matt, it looks like uh, people are ready for live poker, huh? The last couple events you did <laughs> oh, had like thousands of people. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. That the one down in South Florida at Seminole Hard Rock, and then obviously the one uh, at Phoenician is just doing very well. Uh, we're looking forward to a one coming up here very uh, soon here at Phoenician as well. So, looks like people are ready to get back and play live poker. That's for sure. Yeah, there's uh, was it? There's a WPT at Venetian that's like a 5K or something. It's going to be huge. Yeah, it's a 5K uh, million guarantee, and it's going to be uh, yeah, it's going to be big. I expect it to be about seven yeah. eight hundred for sure. Yeah, it's gonna smash that guarantee, right? Like yeah, not, not a problem. Yeah, yeah. And that's, the one that we just that, had in the hard, the one we just had the Hard Rock had a million guarantee and ended up over five million. So definitely some pent up spam. I mean, I bet everyone's yeah. just like I know I'm itching to play live. It's just uh, it's been too long. Yeah, it's definitely been too long. Wow. This is unbelievable. I've seen the set here. There's been a hand every, what, 30 seconds? These guys play, play super fast. It, they play so oh, fast. Oh, it's so yeah. fast. <laughs> we we actually, when I first sat down, like when I was like a couple minutes in, like you, I was like, what's going on? I can't follow this. We've had an hour to get used to it, but they, these guys, this is going fast. That's unbelievable. I, don't think I mean, we're used to, the guys we play against, I mean, even if they know they're folding and they, they take – you know, 40 seconds or something every time. It's just, this is just a different world. So we expect maybe the money's going to go in here, huh, Dan? It's going to go open, jam, call, and then, but, you know, you never know when you're going to see one of these weirdly tight plays like that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. I, th I mean, it is. I, I think it's. I think it's, it's, it's a close spot, right? Um, I, yeah, I think I, it's very close. But yeah, like but the way these guys have been playing, I'm with you. I, I'm shocked to see the fold. But that is just the right play, right? I think. It's close. Um, just folding the king queen suit. Well, but yeah, I think so. I mean, Soho's been finding uh, some spicy uh, preflop jams is the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is just we've seen Soho kind of – we've seen a lot of – we've seen it, you know, both ways where they do something tight. But I think mostly he's a guy – Yeah, he's going to find some shoves. So. Close one. But uh, I thought for sure we were going to see that flip. Yeah, I'd probably be raising, like we already talked about, I'm raising a bunch when I'm chip leader there into the 19 blinds and, and definitely raising uh, raising queens. I mean, you don't want to limp jam them, you don't want to call, right? So raise makes the most sense. Yeah, I think trapping uh, pairs like this in, like, not in the context of a final table where you expect the big blind to play back versus limps more aggressively can make some sense. Uh, here, the 20 big blind stack and the 30 big blind stack to me seem close enough where they're still kind of trying to outlast each other just like before. Uh, so I don't expect the big blind to be overly aggressive. Uh, so I'd be looking to put the money in myself out of the small blind as the chip leader. Right. I thought we might see some spice on the river there. He's got the club. I mean, he's got seven high. Had no chance at winning. I thought maybe he was going to go for it. We waved it. Good thing for him. I don't think he's getting a fold from the, the queens. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Queen eight. Okay, he found the fold. Uh -huh. Wow. They <laughs> just don't even think about it. <laughs> even Matt spit his coffee out there on that one. <laughs> that <was> <laughs> Can't believe how fast this is. So that one, fifteen blinds, king nine off. I mean, that's just that's just a prime time shove hand as the chip leader, or at least the little raise again. Um, as you see what's happening, like he happens to have him dominate, but just letting these short stacks that are under pressure realize with stuff like nine two, I mean, when they're just folding to, to all these raises, you just want to keep taking the pots down. Yeah. But Danny does seem really concerned with not doubling up the short stack so far. He, he's been cautious with that. I, I do have to say that like playing on, uh, like playing on an app, uh, just the interface lends itself to playing faster. Because, like, you know, you're sitting behind the computer, you're, like, looking at your screen, you're thinking, but here it's just, like, you're, like, physically, like, moving a slider or pressing a button, and there's just, like, this impulse to do it faster, at least for me. Yeah, I was playing super fast and only using the, uh, the preset buttons. Um, yeah, so he finds the jam with twos. That's a good one. Now, now Soho's whittled down to 11 blinds, so really uh, a lot of pressure on the second place player. And Danny Aces has this thing. Uh, he's in the driver's seat. Let's see. I mean, if Danny was folding wow, the he, queen he, jack and the 6-7 suited, this, three, this small blind raise is just printing. He's just doing it every sure, time. Yeah. It's a great little adjustment. Someone's going to shove again. It's almost like Danny's letting the middle stack bully him around. A little bit, right? Yeah, so we would want to see now with that eight blind stack, we would want to see a call here from the King Jack. And the spot where your range def to defend if you're playing properly should be super tight, right? Just because you're supposed to get really messed up post-flop by the big stack. Um, but you can see he's checking back a really strong top pair, so he's just in super passive mode. Yeah, busting, 
busting when you have 30 big blinds and the short stack has under 10 uh it's just a bit of a a bit of an icm disaster so you yeah you have to be tight and passive um but not tight not so not tight not that tight though king jack yeah uh, i mean it, w it was uh definitely Holy right man. there uh but yeah would i would have at least uh peeled one and seen what happens now Danny's picking up the primetime shove hands in the small blinds when he needs them. But yeah, I mean, the simple reason you can't just check fold the king jack there, right, is just because then, the, you know, the chip leader can just check back and bet the turn every single time and win all your money. Unless you have a flush or an ace. So I also think when the board goes check, check, uh, quite often you'll see a king check back. Obviously, we didn't that time, and top pair checked back. But generally, it's like the second pair hands uh, that check back, and you beat most of them with king jack. He could have been up against... King 10, king 9. King 10. Or, uh, or he could have just been up against, you know, 7, 8 of hearts, or, what, you know, whatever it might be that did the delayed c-bet, so... So when you have to, yeah, I don't like min raising into the, I would have just folded, let Danny shove the small blind, right? With the ace three. Yeah, I think given the dynamic of uh, like Danny not really playing back against the middle stack uh, and also just not being that aggressive, I'm actually on board with this play. Like I, I, I think it's a great adjustment to how the table has been playing. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, just letting uh, the big stack bust the short stack when you're the middle stack uh, is a good idea. So down to four bigs now. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's gonna get called here by Danny, I would hope. There we go. The red. Get the red lights now. Oh. Oh, okay. Needs a king. The the board runs out so slow compared to how fast the play is. <laughs> it's like like it, it's like you're watching it in extra slow motion. <laughs> it's actually not that slow. <laughs> yeah, I'm so... sure it's actually just normal speed. <laughs> Danny could have brought. All right, so are we going to see an all in here? Seems like Soho. Yeah, I was going to say. Seems like Soho would would jam a hand like that. It might actually get through, Danny. Ah, never mind. He's <laughs> he's over it after he lost the ace too. I could see him have folding that at certain points though, the way he's played. Yeah, he's definitely being conservative. Like we're going to be heads up here. There we go. Either one of you guys a heads up specialist, because I'm I'm not. <laughs> I've seen you do quite well heads up recently. Uh, yeah, but I I did win that one. But uh, <laughs> Dan's probably played more heads up at the end of tournaments than I have. I would say I'm more of a fourth, third, and fourth type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call myself, uh, like, I feel like specialists should be reserved for, like, you know, five people or something. Uh, and, I'm, yeah. uh, and I'm definitely not one of those five people. We do, we do have the benefit of playing these small field tournaments where, uh, you know, you get heads up a lot more than, I mean, if you if you play main events for a living, like these tournaments, you're not going to get heads up very often. So... There's really not even too much reason for a guy that's a main event regular playing stuff like this all the time to, to be that well versed and heads up, right? Just because usually at the end of these things, like you never get there, and then when you do, you usually make a deal. It's huge stakes. So. Yeah, I, I think there's something to be said for learning heads up just for um, kind of getting better in general. Uh, it's obviously. Like, I think it's the most difficult form of poker just because the ranges are the widest. 
Uh, so I, I think in terms yeah. of like developing your game, it's good. Uh, but I agree, just in terms of EV in your tournaments, I think it's almost inconsequential if if you play these yeah. large field tournaments. It's definitely good to notice how things change when you have like you know, ninety three percent of the deck or whatever certain spots uh when you're opening the button or whatever and uh yeah but let's see we got a little but look you know this this match is going to be wild west at least from one one side this is a great card for him to bomb with five high and a great draw but he does check it You know, I would have, I would have probably, yeah, so it's probably been really aggressive on the turn with a hand like that. But I'm sure you're, you know, checking it sometimes at that depth. Yeah, and then I think once you get to the river, um, I don't think it would have gotten through. Uh, but just with five high and no chance at showdown, I, I think I'd, I, I'd try to do something. Yeah, especially in a spot where the the auto position player could have just gotten to the river with another draw, like a ten high that he didn't bluff with, and then you're you're obviously or a queen high went much more likely, and then you get through those a lot. Uh, so when you have a hand that loses to all these missed draws that are still pretty low in terms of like, you know, equity, I think you just got to bluff. Probably would have put that one in more into more check calling, but not a big deal. I played in this event and uh, myself woke up in the middle of the night to play it. I was playing for charity, but uh, it was uh, pretty interesting to play on that app. It actually was worked very, very well. I was uh, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah, I. I had a great time playing on it. I wish I uh, I could have tossed a few more things up and played like three at once or something. Um, it's been a long time since I just one tabled something for <laughs> eight hours or whatever. But uh, that was it was it was definitely good. Eight, eight hours. I gotta you're, get. You're bragging. I, I was out three times in like an hour and a half. <laughs> I did the same. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I know uh, everyone that was playing for charity just was just. Uh, no one made any money. <laughs> That's right. It was it wasn't good. We tried though. Yep. I we got a little. I got a little min cash in there, or no, maybe more. Nice. But yeah, I'm not a bet slider. I got to get used to the bet slider. I just make so many <laughs> mistakes with the bet slider. I switched it to five preset buttons and only use those and never used the bet slider. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's what I did too. It, it's just so easy to to fudge it, and then it's like you don't confirm it, so it just does it. And if you let go at the wrong time, uh, yeah, you know, like especially yeah, deep in a tournament, it can uh, be a costly mistake. Oh, it's scary. Uh -huh. So we just saw we just saw our twenty four blind player fold a king pre flop to a min raise. Uh, I think it was even a decent one. So some. Some whimsical stuff going on here. Bottom pair with a back door. I think you know you clear out a bunch of equity here. The C bet looks good. I'd expect this is gonna go check big bet, and then Danny doesn't seem like the type of guy that calls too much king high here. But I guess first the smaller bet he's gonna. Yeah, heads up, you're still beating pretty much every draw. King high might right. be good. You have a gutter to the nuts. Uh, also, um, you know, we saw we saw him check back with five high before, so I think king high gets to show down maybe a little bit more often than it should, so I definitely like the call. He's going to go with the lead on the river. 
not going to get through. Um, probably, yeah, I mean, in terms of what you get there with, I mean, having the 10 is all right. Um, I'm not sure you want to do that all too often, but that seems like kind of reasonable. You're going to check call some Jack 10 there and stuff like that. And maybe lead that. Yeah, and um, hard for you to get uh, to the river with worse. So, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, the king, the king high check call. I think if you're gonna make some bluffs there, you know, you can't always have the perfect hand that has a club. You can, you're not gonna get there that week that often. This is a big thing you see even from really loose players is just like what you were saying when ranges are so wide their continued thresholds are generally too tight right like the the king 10 there um on the paired board very strong heads up uh but when when you're not used to playing versus an 80 percent range or whatever it is it's uh it, it's kind of hard to to grasp how good your king high is when you're probably like the loosest range that you're used to playing regularly against is like a 50% button open or something like that. I mean, I see, I know it again here, like continuing versus check raises, I guess that that's probably one, but, um, I, uh, I notice I happen even, it even happens to me. Like you just, because it's what, you know, you generally trend towards going back to playing like big blind versus button, you know, mm -hmm. cause that's like your most, that's what you're most familiar with playing out of position. Defend a big blind and play against another guy that's in position and it's the button or whatever. But it's just so different that you have a lot of these hobbies and thresholds or habits and thresholds in your mind that really are way too tight when once you're once you're playing against one range, like you said, that's that's so wide. Gotta have a hand here. Yeah, I was gonna say I expect this one to get with the back door, back door straight draw. I wonder if Danny's going to put in a raise on the flop there. What do you think, Dan or, or Matt? You, that, that seems like a hand. I'd probably put a raise in with Kings there sometimes on the flop. Yeah. Oh, um, oh here we go. Yeah, there oh. you go. Can do it. Yeah, I think calling's okay too. Uh, definitely with like queens and jacks, uh, I'd want to put in a raise. Kings seem like okay to slow play. Well. That's it. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of our guest commentators. Uh, that was that was the fastest final table I've ever witnessed, I think. I know. Amazing. I'm going to be able to go back to bed. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, Thanks for having I guess guys, that's it. That quick. I, Thanks for having me. I was supposed to jump over to yeah. the uh, stream in India, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I don't think they're playing anymore in India either. I think it's over. <laughs> no. Yeah, oh. Matt, you want to wrap this one up for us? Congratulations to our winner, Danny A66, winning 1.75 million. Congratulations. Thanks for playing on Poker King and World Poker Tour. Thank you, wow, guys. You guys so, are awesome. <laughs> so much better than we would have done. Thanks a lot, Matt. Appreciate it. <laughs> you got it. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Take care, guys. Take care. Congratulations on your win, guys. Thank you. <laughs>